Propaganda. Today, we see it in the form of advertisements, social media, and in general, the messages through media that we choose to consume. How was propaganda different during World War I, and how could it have affected the average soldier's life? Frank Burton was your typical Canadian guy. He was born in Nashville, Ontario on September 14, 1885. He worked an average day job at a flour mill and married his wife Edith in 1915. Then, on April 12, 1916, Frank enlisted with the 94th Battalion to fight in World War I. What could have inspired him to leave his wife, his job, his future family, and quite possibly his life behind? The answer to that is quite simple, and it comes in the form of one thing, propaganda. Posters, radio messages, and word of mouth all spread the same message. Enlist in the war, return home with honor and glory, help save our country. Many soldiers saw posters and decided that enlistment was for them. There also wasn't much choice. If you didn't join the war, you were quite literally shamed by everyone around you, and in 1916, most people didn't have a choice at all. So let's say that Frank was walking home from work one day, and he saw an enlistment poster with a message such as, this is your flag, it stands for liberty, fight for it. That's pretty convincing. It was also virtually impossible to ignore the war going on, so there's a high chance that a poster like that could have been the final straw of convincing someone to join the war effort. So, the poster is convinced him. He joins the war, sails off, starts fighting for his country, and returns home when the war is over. Maybe in six months? Right? So, so, so far from it. Frank got off to a bad start. On his way to England from Halifax, Frank came down with a case of the mumps. Because of that, he was transferred to the 17th Battalion. After two weeks, Frank was in peak condition, but it turns out the 17th Battalion didn't want him anymore. The 13th, however, did. He served with the 13th Battalion in France for over two years and barely suffered a single injury. He did, however, not have the best luck with illness. He caught a fever three times, and all three times required hospitalization. Frank lived in the war for a long time, but eventually he officially returned home in April of 1919. Frank had survived the war. It's crazy to think that a piece of paper with a drawing and words on it could have resulted in someone willingly dedicating their life to war. These posters were, in a way, the most significant form of propaganda in the war, and therefore the backbone of the entire war effort. Art and propaganda are just as important in a war as soldiers. Sure, one soldier by himself would not have been a significant force on a battlefield, but a whole battalion fighting together is strong. Those battalions were formed by men enlisting, and they enlisted because of advertisements like the posters. If the posters did not only advertise heroic acts, but the good pay and how fighting would show a loyalty to your country, many of these men would not have enlisted. When we look back at Canada's history in World War I, propaganda was a powerful tool that definitely did its part, whether that be for better or for worse.